In this video, we're going to be going over packed project libraries and how to use them. If you're not familiar with packed project libraries, they're LabVIEWs, or kind of like LabVIEWs equivalent to a DLL. The idea is you'll take your source VIs, compile them into a standalone library that can be reused in other applications. There's a few really good reasons to do this. The first is that it makes all your VIs read only. So for instance, if you have a common library used by a bunch of developers, you don't want anybody accidentally making a change to it. And so you can do a source distribution for that, or you can compile it into a PPL, and then they don't have the option or opportunity to mess it up. It also helps with uh, versioning. You can pull PPL version numbers in both in LabVIEW and in TestDan. So if you have an instrument driver or a measurement, uh, a me custom measurement library, you can pull that information out as part of your test sequence so that when you run a test execution, you're logging exactly which software components you're doing. It also helps in regulated industries such as avionics, where if you have it built and deployed code and somebody needs to change something, the uh, they have to write a problem report in order to change the the framework or the PPL in the framework versus just jumping in there and then quickly recompiling it. You shouldn't, you should never do that anyway, but sometimes things happen. All right, so let's get started. So I've, I've got a folder and I've taken two of these dialogues that I've written for in other videos and we're going to create a project. So first we go to blank project and we'll save it and we're going to call this Common dialog. Common dialogs. And then the first thing you need is you need a library. This is the library portion of the packed project library. And then I'll take my files and drag them in. Save it. And then under build specifications, we right click. new packed library so we're going to call this common library and i'm going to leave the default directory and the next thing you do is you go into your source files and just grab the top level library VI. You usually don't have to include anything in the always include because any dependency of the library will be dragged in. But if you had something that wasn't dependent on the library, for instance, like a, some documentation or something, you could do it there. Destination, if you need any uh, special option for the destination, it's very similar to what you get with the build executable, but you usually don't have to manage it. There's an option under advanced you want to be aware of. It's called enable debugging. And what this does is that it allows you to view the block diagram even when it's compiled. So you can't change the block diagram, but you can view the block diagram. So if you build a common library into a PPL and deploy it, and there's an issue with it, the developers can trace into it. They can set breakpoints. They can watch what's going on, see what it's doing. They just can't change it. And so that forces some process in that they then have to report a problem with their library and then you fix it in the library and then deploy a new version of the library to your developers. And so we're going to change, enable that real quick. Advanced exclusions. This is another uh, more advanced topic you should be aware of. These two are very useful if you're using a, a class-based hierarchy inside your PPLs. For instance, when I write an instrument driver framework that I'll typically have a, a base class instrument that everything everything inherits from. And so the instrument class will be built into a PPL and it will be built into one directory. And then all of the children classes I like to build into the same directory. However, because the, their dependency is also in the same directory they're building to, they would have to, they would, it does, it doesn't work. You'd have to have the instrument base class somewhere else. And then each of the children class would then copy the base class repeatedly into that directory. So if you just exclude it, then it will build into the directory. It'll still be linked to the same base library, instrument library, but it won't do this copy operation. It just assumes that it's inside the, the build directory.
And then if we go down to version information, here is the information that you can embed inside the assembly. Sorry, assembly is a .NET equivalent, but in, in LabVIEW in the side the PPL. So if you need to change the version numbers, you can. Usually I just leave it to auto increment unless I have a, a reason to change it. The usually it'll just end up incrementing the last number. Any copyright, company name, et cetera, comes here. And then if you go to preview, you'll, you'll see that we've got two VIs and a library over here, but it all compiles down into one packed library here. And let's do build. Explorer. And there's our common library. If you double click it, it looks kind of like a, a LabVIEW library if you open one of those up. A little bit more modern interface, but you see that we don't have the library itself in there. Instead, it's, it, it comes here saying libp instead of lib. And then here's your dialogues. I don't have these locked down as dialogues, so you can resize them. You can see you can take a look. You'll notice you don't have any options to, to change things. It's all read only, but you can flip through it, take a look at it. If, the, if we had not enabled debugging, you wouldn't be able to do that. All right, and then what the other thing I wanna show you is how to, to add one of these PPLs to a, a test stand framework. Okay, so in another video, I've showed how to configure a custom test and environment, and we're gonna add this common library to that environment. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, one of the big advantages of PPLs and test and is you don't have to recompile the code before you deployment. If it's in a PPL, it will deploy just fine. So I'm gonna go over to my AT1 environment, and typically I put them in the public directory, and I'll have a, a folder such as common, and put my common library there. Then when I launch the ATE environment, and I show how to make these uh, shortcuts that will launch test and in the environment you choose in that video as well. Okay. Then we can access them by relative path. So we'll do an action. Come on. The other thing is at this point, you don't even need, if it's in a PPL, it will run with a LabVIEW runtime. So you don't even need the LabVIEW development environment if you don't want to. Okay. I'm gonna go the long way around for this. Public common, common library. And let's just do the pre-UT dialog for now. User relative path, common, common library. And there's your dialog. For this particular dialog, we're using a pre UT dialog, which, if you wanted to actually add that to the pre UT dialog, we'll do that in a different video, but you'd create a callback in here, pre UT, and then do the same thing, just call the step. And that's it.